All right, hey guys, uh, I know you noticed yesterday that I posted the midterm exam, right, that's due this coming Sunday, August 2nd, and I just wanted to take a brief moment to kind of go over what you need to get accomplished here on this midterm, right? Uh, this is the part where you get to show me how well you can use this information that you are learning, right, through the lectures and through the textbooks, and, and of course you do have the option while you're uh, preparing your answers for these questions to use the internet as well, but, you know, be mindful of what sources you use on the web, right? There's a lot of bad information out there. Um, I'll say right now, if you're going to looking out in the web, uh, on the web, a general rule of thumb is look for websites that are .org or .edu. .edu is usually the best. Um, matter of fact, you can even in your Google search bar put in the term site colon edu and it'll only put up edu websites and that keeps you from going to places like billybobshistoryplace.com and getting a lot of ridiculous information or what is that one other website that's really bad oh yeah history.com yeah the history channel they're really not very good uh, general information they're fine but if you look at anything that's nuanced or anything that has to do with analysis take it with a grain of salt it's usually pretty awful um okay so you got these five questions, right? You're going to type up these short answers. You can see I put a template on there. Um, the short answers, you know, there's 25% of this grade is just you getting the format and font right. Each question needs to begin on its own page, all right? If you're using Google Docs and exporting it to a PDF, make sure that it exports right. Sometimes it moves stuff around, right? You might have to adjust it. Same thing with if you're using an Apple and you're saving it as a PDF, which is what I recommend you do. Certainly don't save it as a .pages file because it won't upload. Um, make sure that your spacing stays there, right, so that you don't get docked on format. Uh, each answer needs to be at least one page long. I'm going to tell you this right now. It needs to be one page, one inch formats, uh, times the 12-point 12, 12 font times New Roman, uh, double space. Do not put the extra space between the paragraphs because I don't count that as part of that page at that point. You know, where it's double space, but then it's basically quadrupled sp space between paragraphs. Don't do that, because I'm going to pretty much delete that out of there when I'm determining whether or not you've hit the minimum requirement for length. Okay. Uh, this is all about your analysis, right? This is your ability to use this information. So you, if you look at the rubric, a lot of the grading is you got a little bit where you're demonstrating your knowledge of the topic, but the rest of it is your ability to analyze it and your ability to support it with evidence, right? Do not make a single statement on there without supporting it with evidence, right? Anything that you see out there, say, if you say this is this, you better say why, right? Because, you know, it's just opinion until you give it evidence. That's what the difference between um, opinion and analysis is. The difference between opinion and analysis is evidence. Okay, so make sure that you're doing that. Uh, like I said, you got five of those, so it's, uh, it's quite a bit of writing, but you've got until Sunday to get it done. You have the questions. You can prepare your uh, document and upload it. Do not create five separate documents, please. Just one document with each question starting on its own page. Okay. Um, like I said, feel free to send me questions on it. Now, question five. I wanted to make a quick note on question five. Uh, question five, I kind of designed to hopefully be a little bit fun, right? Um, we all know about Al Capone and Prohibition, and so I don't find him very interesting in, in, in all honesty. Um, and I tell the story, I give a profile on George Ramis, right, in one of the, who I think is the more interesting characters in Prohibition, right, and so question five allows you to kind of go out and try and find somebody else that you might find interesting, which means you cannot use Al Capone, you cannot use George Ramis, but go search around, and I put a couple of uh, web links for you out there to get you started, right, and you can look elsewhere, and like I said, but just be mindful of the websites you use. I'm not saying don't use .com, I'm just saying be careful when you do, right, uh, but go find someone that you find interesting and, you know, and, and make a case for him being an interesting character in Prohibition. Talk about what he did. Talk about the effects of it. Talk about the, you know, uh, some of the, you know, the, there's a lot of this stuff that permeates through today. Like, you know, there's terminology, for example, right? Bathtub gin is a term that comes from Prohibition because people were literally making gin in their bathtub. You know, today we just have single moms in New Mexico make uh, uh, meth, and, and back then it was bathtub gin. Gin. So, you know, have a little bit of fun with that one, because when I grade it, I'm just going to look to see what kind of interesting characters you looked, uh, looked up and how well, you know, and, and what, what you learned about them, right? And so that one's going to be one that should be some pretty easy points, I would think. So, all right, make sure to email me with any questions. Uh, good luck with this.
right? I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Hope we're all enjoying our COVID is isolation. You know, hopefully you're all going out, you know, wearing your masks, right? I actually got these for my favorite football team, right? Um, it was nice, too, because all the uh, proceeds went to the COVID uh, or to the uh, CDC Foundation, which is trying to research for a vaccine. So, uh, anyway, stay safe, guys. Uh, do your best. Email me with questions. Don't be afraid to ask me questions. And, um, and we'll talk to you again here, hopefully 